It, no, I'm serious. It'll be okay. It's just for a few months. It's just, it won't, you, you, the time will go by real quickly. Sleep well, my friends. Sleep well. <laughs>
that means everything. Um, so we finally got her checked into a rehab hospital about a week and a half into it, I guess. And so that's where she is now getting that. And she saw the last video about my mother and she goes, well, you didn't say anything about me. And I said, well, I was trying to protect your privacy. And she goes, no, you need to tell them so that they know what you're dealing with. And I said, what I'm dealing with? Well, what do you mean what you're dealing with? <laughs> so anyway, so that's the story. And she's getting rehab now. I think she's getting better. So a couple of weeks, hopefully we'll get her back home and everything will be um, at least on the mend. If she can if she can function by herself again, that's what we want. We know the healing process is going to take several months, but um, if she can at least function by herself, that's kind of the goal that we're shooting for. Uh, fortunately, I was able to work from home that, that while she was home, so uh, thanks to my employer for allowing me to do that. That certainly helped a lot. Um, well, I'm getting a flash of that. I bet I'm going to lose the battery here pretty soon. So anyway, that's that story. Uh, almost torn everything down that I'm going to tear down today, and now we'll get back to today's regularly scheduled program. Kathy is now home from the rehab hospital. She was there for about a week and a half and is able to do a lot more on her own. Um, I'm still not getting dinner cooked for me, but that really wasn't a result of the procedure. Uh, one of the doctors that she had there, though, was interested in doing a case study on her because even though they call what happened to her out as a risk on the documents that you sign, it almost never happens. And so they are very interested to find out why it happened and uh, see if they can prevent it from happening to someone else in the future or Kathy. So if you're a doctor, you may read about this case very soon. This hat is the RPi 28D from Hanson Electronics. It's basically a small pixel controller that attaches directly to a Pi 2, a Pi 3, or a Pi 0. Now the Pi runs Falcon Player and this hat drives a few strings of pixels or provides a DMX output for driving other DMX, Renard, or LOR controllers. So if you don't have pixels yet, but you've been thinking about adding some to your display, this would be a good little toe dip into pixels. Now the hat mounts to the 40 pin connector on the Pi and includes the necessary nylon hardware to keep it mounted to the Pi. If you power the RPi 28D, it also provides power for the Pi so you won't need a separate power supply for the Pi. If you use the WS2811 output, onboard audio on the Pi is disabled and you'll need to use a USB dongle to get audio out of the Pi. There's a battery slot on the bottom for a CR2032 battery to power the real-time clock on the RPi 28D. Now, this is useful if the Pi doesn't have an internet connection. The RPi 28D can be powered from either 5 volts or 12 volts DC, although the 12 volt input is actually tolerant of any voltage in the range of 9 volts to 24 volts. The connected Raspberry Pi is powered from the same power source. You can power the RPi 28D off the Raspberry Pi's power input if absolutely necessary and or desired. If you're running the RPi 28D from 5 volts, then connect the power to the 0 volt and 5 volt terminals of CN5. A 2 amp fuse is recommended. If running off of 9 volts to 24 volts DC, then connect power to the 0 volt and 12 volt terminals of CN5. And in this case, a 1 amp fuse is recommended. The three pixel outputs can be powered from the same or different voltage power supplies. The pluggable pixel connectors are rated at 7.5 amps, so a fuse of no higher than 7.5 amps should be in series with the power input. Now, connecting 12 volts to the 5 volt power input will damage components on the PCB and may even damage the Raspberry Pi. Connecting power in reverse can also damage the board and the Pi. Connecting 5 volts to the 12 volt input will cause the board not to work due to insufficient voltage. The RS485 output of the RPi 28D is wired according to the ESTA pinout with pin 1 being data plus, pin 2 being data minus, and pins 7 and 8 being ground. It's possible in the Falcon Player setup to configure the data type as DMX, LOR, or Renard. It will be necessary to use an adapter or crossover cable to connect to another style of controller. The RS485 driver IC is in an IC socket 
and can be easily replaced if damaged. The DMX output is not electrically isolated from the Pi. For this demonstration, we've got a 12 volt power supply going through the hex fuse from Hanson Electronics. We've got a set of 100 pixels here uh, coming out with the ground to the RPi 28D. And I have a hot lead coming into the 12 volt side of the RPi, and then I have another. Uh, 12 volt lead coming in to feed the pixels over here. Coming out, I'm coming out the first WS2811 port. Uh, there's two of those. I'm just going to use one for now. Uh, this is a WS2801 port. So that's the setup. We will take a look at how all this stuff is set up in Falcon Player and what you need to do to get it running. We'll assume that Falcon Player is installed, but you've made no configuration options to it. So we go up to channel outputs. First thing we will need is a E131 ArtNet output. So enable that. For now, we'll just enter one universe. We'll set it. 512 multicast is fine for this save and then we need to enable an output on the RPi so we will add select the type this is a 2811 start channel is one we will do 100 pixels notice that this channel count goes to 300 because of 100 pixels it has three channels so we go 300 we will make it active it's going to reboot okay save okay so let's try i have a little test sequence here let's see if that works that does so these pixels are running off of the rpi 28d okay so that works now let's run over to X lights and I have a just a little bar pattern running on uh, per per model per preview so it looks something like this on my whole house model it really doesn't matter this is just going to be a test pattern but let's output to the lights and we notice we don't see anything so we go back to the Pi or Falcon player and put this in bridge mode well looky there we've got lights now so if, and just to prove it to you if I turn off the lights they turn off turn them back on they turn on so this is taking output from X lights sending it to the Pi and we're getting an output here on the pixels the RPi 28D is a nice little device if you're just getting started with pixels or if you've got a couple of props that you want to put kind of in a remote location a little bit too far away from your main controller. A uh, great little solution for that. Thanks to Alan at Henson Electronics for sending this to me. If you have any questions, leave them below. We'll get to them. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. And all the dogs run. Flying over. There's so many cars going back.